Hello everyone, in this tutorial what I'll be covering is the PHP get post and request variable. As mentioned in the previous tutorial, there are two different types of methods, get and post. They both have their pros and cons, but let's first start with the post variable, which I introduced you to a little bit in the last tutorial. So starting with the last tutorial, we use the post method as I indicated here. And in our form underscore success file, we had dollar sign underscore post plus the name of the input to access what the user had typed in a particular text field. Well, the get variable is not much different, but we will get to that in a moment. But now let me explain some of the benefits for the post method. Some of the benefits are the information that the user types in a text field or any other input type, for example, is invisible to others. And this will make more sense once I actually show you the get method and show you the differences. Additionally, there is no limit on the amount of information you can send using the post method. But there is one slight disadvantage that the post method does not do that the get method does do. But I will come back to that once I actually show you an example of the get method. So first, what I'm going to do is go back and I'm going to actually save this as a different file for this particular tutorial. I'm going to call it form underscore post dot PHP. All right. And then I'm about to make a new file and I'm just going to copy this. And I'm going to paste it. And in this one, I'm going to use the get method instead of the post method. All right. And in this file, I'm going to go ahead and save this. I'm going to save it as form underscore underscore get dot PHP. All right. And I'm also going to go to my form underscore success page. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to paste that here. And I'm going to go ahead and save that as form underscore success get dot php all right so now that i've created both files let me go back to my form underscore success get file the only thing that i have to change here if i am using the get method is to change the post to get it's that simple and now i'm done i'm just going to go ahead and save that now there is one more thing that we have to change. Remember, we have to actually change the action as well. So I need to change this form underscore success to form underscore success get. All right. And I'm going to hit save on that. Now I'm going to go to my browser and I'm going to type localhost, the PHP basics, and I'm going to go to form underscore get. And as you can see here, we have the same looking form as our previous file except this time we're using the get method so i'm just going to go ahead and emphasize the information and remember from my last tutorial i didn't do anything with the last name information so i could leave that blank but i'm just going to put something there in a way then just put in a fake email and i'm going to hit submit and as you can see it looks very similar but if we look in the address bar that's where things get a little bit different so let me just stretch this out some so as you can see here we have form underscore success get dot php then we have a question mark then we have the name of the text field right that i'm accessing and we can see what it's equal to it's equal to robert that's what i typed in that text field it also is showing the last name what, what i typed in the last name field and you see it says smith and for email it's showing my fake email address so the clear differences here is that the get method shows the information that you typed in the text fields or any other inputs for the form, but the post method does not. So just to refresh your memory or to show you that the post method is different from the get method, let's actually go to the post.php file and let's type in the same information and put fake at gmail.com. I'm going to hit submit. And as you can see, it says the same thing here, but in the address bar, it does not show our information. So again, as you can see with the get method, the information is visible in the address bar, unlike the post method. The primary advantage with the get method is that your users can easily bookmark the page. So for example, if I just hit return on this, all the information that I just sent is now erased or it's unknown right now. So if I go back and I go to get.php, 
and I type in again my first name last name and a fake email hit enter all right if I copy this URL which is clearly showing all the information I entered I copy it and let's say I open a new tab and I paste that as you can see it's showing that same information here but with the again post again I want to show you this to just make sure it's clear if I again type in the information and again I'm using the post method this time fake email hit submit again that information isn't up here but if I copy and I again go to a I went to a new window but that's fine and I paste that again it's not showing any of that information so when I hit enter it doesn't show the information I had typed in unlike the get method does so that brings me back to the disadvantage for the post method, which is you would not be able to bookmark the page. However, you would not want to use the get method if users were typing in, say, a password or any other private information, since that information would be visible. So the get method, however, does have a disadvantage, which is it, it does have a limit of 2000 characters. So, for example, if I type more than let's say, let's go back to the get if I type more than 2000 characters in this text field, it would not be able to hold all that information. However, the post method on the other hand would be able to hold all that information. All right. So now let's finally talk about our last variable. And what I'm going to do before I start to talk about it is I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to copy what I have here. I'm going to paste it and I'm going to say, Instead of get, I'm going to say request. And I'm going to save this as form underscore success request. I know it's a long name, but <laughs> I know exactly what this file is. So in a way, I'm going to go back to form underscore get, and I'm going to change this to request. And I'm also going to go to form underscore post and change this to request. All right. So now let me talk about the request variable a little bit before I show you what it actually does. The request variable contains the data of both the get and post variable. So that means you can use the request variable to collect data a user input into a form from both the post and get methods. Now, I know that sounds confusing, but I am going to show you what I mean here in a second. And as you can see, I was already going ahead and setting up my different actions to kind of give you a hint at what's about to happen. So just to reevaluate here, I have both my get and post files pointing to the same action. So we're going to send the data that we input into the text fields to the same file, basically. So. Again, I'm going to go ahead and save this form underscore post page. I'm also going to save this form underscore get page. So again, I have my get and my post pointing to the same file. And I have this file over here that's using the request variable. All right. So I'm going to save that. And now I'm going to go back to my browser. And let's go ahead and start with the get method. And I'm going to type in Robert Smith fake at gmail.com hit submit and as you can see it works just fine it works as if i was using the dollar sign underscore get variable and if i go back and i change this form underscore to post hit enter and let's do the same thing robert smith and what fake at gmail.com hit submit and as you can see it works just the same so if you were in a situation where you had a scenario where you had both a get method and a post method and you wanted to have just one destination, for example, such as what I have here that uses the request variable, you could do that here. I'm not sure when you would be in a situation where you needed to do that, but it's available to you if you ever needed to. So that does conclude this tutorial. So be sure to take the online quiz at the phpbasics.com to ensure you understand the basic concepts for the PHP get post and request variable. This also concludes the PHP basics beginner series. So if you have watched all the PHP basics tutorials up to this point, 
Hopefully you now have a new or better understanding about PHP. Be sure to visit the phpbasics.com for future video tutorials from other PHP experts that will be covering a wide variety of PHP topics.